Remember, we were talking about tidy data, where it needs to have every variable in its own column, every case in its own row, and every value in its own cell. Um, and then I kind of add this fourth rule that uh, every row needs to be the same sort of thing. So if we have tidy data, um, the practice of data visualization is turning variables from that tidy data set and mapping them to visual attributes. So things that are on paper or kind of digital paper, the, the screen. There's this uh, data visualization guy named Jacques Bertin who wrote a famous book called The Semiology of Graphics. And he outlined what he thinks are all of the visual attributes that we have to play with. So we could use shape, size, hue, value, and intensity of color. We could use texture, um, and we can have points, lines, and areas. And there's different uh, ways to visualize data that are better for different variable types. So we're going to be thinking a lot about these visual attributes. But before we get into all those details, I want to give you a brief history of data visualization. And I'm going to start this history 1500 years BC. So I think that this is kind of a stretch to say that it's data visualization. Um, but you might make the argument that cave paintings are a form of data visualization. There's data that you can pull from this cave painting. Um, it tells you something about the ratio of hunters to animals. Um, it gives you some information about the hunting practices, like maybe uh, you're going to have to use multiple arrows for, for one creature. There's some stuff about uh, the gender of the animals because we've got some with horns and some without. So information is being conveyed. I don't, I don't know that I would classify this quite as a data visualization, but people have been encoding uh, information using visual attributes for a long time. Um, let's jump forward uh, some thousands of years into the 900s. Um, this is one of the first kind of official versions of data visualization that most people agree on. So this shows the way that the planets move over time, the kind of cyclical uh, movement. So it's kind of a time series plot. There's a, kind of a legend that's labeled right on there, but it's showing the movement of the planets. Uh, let's jump forward several hundred more years. Uh, that William Playfair um, is credited with the invention of a bunch of the common uh, data visualizations. So this is kind of the birth of, of modern data visualization where we're really thinking about um, you know, things that might get published in books or newspapers. He's credited with the pie chart, the bar chart, the line chart, the area chart. He created a lot of these, these visualizations. Uh, next up is Jon Snow, probably not the one that you're thinking about from Game of Thrones. Uh, Jon Snow is famous because he uh, used mapping to solve the cholera epidemic in London. So this was some early epidemiology where he uh, was able to determine that there was a particular pump that was infected and removed the handle from the pump uh, and then uh, was able to control this cholera epidemic. Um, Jon Snow gets credit for this map, uh, which is a famous uh, piece of early data visualization, but it actually wasn't drawn by Jon Snow. It was drawn by someone named Charles Cheffins. Um, he doesn't usually get credit for it, but he's technically the one who drew it. Uh, then we get into the late 1700s, early 1800s. There's a man named uh, Charles Menard, and uh, he does a bunch of data visualizations, including this data visualization on Napoleon's March on Russia. Many people say that this is the best statistical graphic ever drawn. I'm not sure that I agree with them. I think that it is a good graphic. I think that it uh, conveys a lot of information. Um, so what's happening is we got the number of soldiers who started out, so a bunch of soldiers, and then we're moving through time. Um, so as they move in this direction, some soldiers kind of break off. There's a few places, you know, these people kind of break off, then they maybe rejoin. Um, and, and the number of soldiers is getting less and less over time. Um, they're going to Moscow, which is where they're trying to... Uh, uh, they're trying to have a battle. Uh, the, the sort of big point of this graphic is that uh, some people did die in battle, uh, but many more of them died because of the temperature. So they're just sort of like dying, dying, dying as they're trying to do the travel. It's a long, arduous travel. And then they're also dying on the way back. Um, 
uh, and some of the temperatures are measured here. So the temperatures are really low, they're dying. Uh, these people who'd broken off at this point rejoin. We get some more people who are alive, and more of them die, more of them die, and we finally get back uh, a, a tiny fraction of the number that, that left initially. So this graphic um, includes a ton of information. It's got a timeline, it's got a number of people, it's got the temperature graph um, for the return of the march, um, it's got you know relative proportions. So it's got a lot going on. Um, I think that it requires uh, some careful attention to be able to read it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, uh, but it certainly makes it a more challenging visualization to look at. Around the same time, Florence Nightingale uh, was creating some new data visualizations. So you probably know Florence Nightingale's name because she was a nurse. She was also a statistician, and she invented the coxcomb chart, which is this variation on the pie chart. Um, and the coxcomb, uh, the the segments of the pie go out further if the if the group there is larger. So um, this again, it's causes of mortality in the army in the east. Uh, we've got a lot about you know people dying. That's a, a common thing that people were visualizing with data visualizations. Then we've got late 1800s, early 1900s, we've got Francis Galton. Francis Galton is one of the most famous statisticians. He invented many new types of data visualization, and so he's got a lot of contributions to statistics. Uh, but at the same time, he was a massive eugenicist. So he used data visualization and statistics to try to make uh, arguments for um, trying to sterilize people um, and uh, reduce numbers of people in certain races. So uh, I think we've moved away from uh, celebrating him quite as much because he was eugenicist. It turns out a lot of statisticians were eugenicists, so statistics has kind of a, a bad history when you start looking into the past. So this one it doesn't have a name with it, but in the 1800s, there was a sort of trend of these statistical atlases, which uh, sort of described um, information about particular areas or subjects. Um, and most of that data visualization uh, tended to be about white people. So a really interesting uh, contrast to that is the work of W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I read a lot of Du Bois uh, in college. Du Bois was one of the founders of the NAACP. Um, he was a huge advocate against Jim Crow laws. He wrote a bunch of literature. He was this very prolific thinker. Um, and one of the probably least known things that he did is he created this set of data portraits. Um, and the data was all about Black people in the United States. And it was displayed at the Paris exhibition, which is sort of like like the World's Fair, um, and it had a huge impact in changing how people saw uh, Black folks in the United States. Um, and so here are some of the, the graphics that he created. They're not in great shape, but I know that there's a book that's, uh, I think, being published this year, which is going to reprint a bunch of his data visualizations, and they're really beautiful. Um, next up is my new favorite statistician, Mary Eleanor Spear. She lived from 1897 to 1986, which I think is an awesome uh, time period and really uh, amazing long life. Um, and I just learned about her recently. Uh, she's actually the statistician who developed um, the box plot and perhaps gave the name to the bar chart. Um, she wrote a book about graphics in the 1950s and then another version of it in the 1960s. And she's only now kind of getting credit for uh, her, her work. So I've included a photograph of her book where she's showing the box plot, the median, the interquartile range, um, and then the full range. So uh, this is one of the, the graphics that, that she developed um, and, and put into her books. And one thing that's going on um, in data visualization at this time is that everything basically needs to be done by hand. If you're going to have something printed, maybe you could come up with a really, you know, intricately cut plate and, and do some type of screen printing. But we don't have computers to be uh, working on statistical graphics in, um, in this time period. 